Imagine this. Let's say that you've created a small application and it does a number of different things for a user. But then you think to yourself that it would be a pretty good idea to add a couple extra features. So you go on about adding those extra features, but then you realize to yourself that you should probably make a few extra pages to show off those new features. But then you think to yourself that you need some logic to connect those new features with your new pages. After doing all of this of adding extra features and pages maybe once or multiple times, you take a step back and you realize that you built a pretty cool application that's complex, but at the expense of it being hard to manage or even read through. This is a super common occurrence in web development where as your application grows in size, it becomes harder to keep track of its moving parts. Luckily for all of us developers, there have been a number of proposed solutions out there that aim to address these growing pains, and one of the most common solutions out there has to be the MVC design pattern. MVC, which stands for Model View Controller, is a design pattern that focuses on providing a guideline on how to write and organize application code so that it's clear to a developer what the rules and responsibilities of a component is within an application. What's up, I'm Gemma, and in this video we're going to be taking a closer look at MVC. We'll break down this design pattern by understanding each of its components and their responsibilities. We'll even walk through a practical example that uses MVC, and by the end of the video you should know about the benefits and maybe some of the drawbacks of this design pattern. So now that we've covered all of that, let's try to understand what the purpose of each component in this design pattern is, and how these components interact with each other. As mentioned before, MVC is made up of three distinct types of components, which are the models, views, and controllers. So first up, we have the model component. This type of component is responsible for all things data related. It's the component that manages and handles the data for a given application. Models typically hold the logic responsible for retrieving information or data from a database or perform some filtering or sorting algorithms on that data. So anything data related should be found in a model. Next up, we have the view component, which is responsible for rendering visuals onto a user's screen. There shouldn't be a whole lot of logic in these components, just visually related information like HTML and CSS. So anything you visually see within a web application is getting managed by views. And lastly, we have the controller component, which at its core is sort of a liaison type component that sits between the models and the views. The controller can listen for any user inputs via the view components and decide on what to do with that provided information. On top of that, the controller can also listen to events or actions coming from model components and also decide on what to do with that information. One of the most powerful things about the MVC design pattern is that your models and views never directly interact with each other. If there's information that should come from a view over to a model or vice versa, all that has to go through the controller first. So one of the biggest responsibilities of a controller component is to be the messenger between these models and these views. So the data that makes the user experience more dynamic is usually stored in the model, and that information has to be flowed through the controller over to the view so the user can see that information. And if a user creates or provides more information that should be stored in the model, that goes from the view component to the controller and back into the model component. So now that we have a high level theoretical understanding of how MVC works, let's take a closer look at a practical web application example so we can solidify this knowledge. So let's say that I've created a movies database web application that stores movies with their name, their image, their release date, and maybe their average ratings. On the homepage of this app, you can scroll through all the movies currently stored in the database. And if you want to look for a specific movie, I also added a search bar so you could do that. I also added the functionality where a user can add, change, or delete movies so that the database has the right information for that user. So with this information, let's break down this app using MVC. The view components in this application would be responsible for rendering everything you see on the screen. So that means the home page, even like the search bar, or even the page that details each movie that you clicked on. You should also be able to see each movie's image, title, and extra information, which comes from the model. The model components in this app will be responsible for holding and keeping track of all the movie related data that exists. So in our case, a model component could be interfacing with the database that keeps track of all of the movie's images, titles, release dates, and average ratings. The models could also grab that data from that database and perform some filtering or sorting algorithms or just generally transforming that data to pass it back over to the controller. So for our controller components, they would be responsible for listening to user events and interactions and sending that information back and forth between our models and views. For example, let's say that a user wants to search for a specific movie. Our controller component is going to grab that user action and then determine what to do with that information. Our controller is then going to request from the model to filter out the correct movies and then get that information back so then it can pass it back over to our view component to repaint the page. 
you can see how the controller serves as a bridge between our view and model components. Another example could be where a user wants to add a new movie. When the user clicks on the add button, the view is going to send that information over to the controller saying that the user wants to add a new movie. The controller now knows that it needs to take the user's input and send it over to the model so the model can add that information into the database. And once the model adds that new information, it will send it back over to the controller so it can send it back over to the view component, which will allow the user to see that their movies have been added to the database. So through these examples, we should start to see how the controller is a bridge between our models and our views. Anytime a user interacts with their application, that information gets passed over from a view component over to a controller, and then typically that controller figures out what it needs to do with that information, whether it needs to go over to a model component or just pass that information back over to a view component. To put all of this in a more technical context, we can look at a typical project tree to see how our files are organized to follow MVC. And on top of that, we can take a look at some of these files to see how they're written to also follow this design pattern. So this is how I would organize my movies database code, where I have my movies database directory, and inside this directory, I have three directories called controllers, models, and views. Inside of my controllers directory, I have a movie controller file that's responsible for routing any information from views and models that's related to a movie. Inside of my models folder, I have a movie model which is responsible for holding any logic that is data related for a movie. And then inside my views directory, I have a couple different views that are responsible for different pages on my application. We can also take a closer look at some of these files to understand how they follow the MVC design pattern. So first up, let's take a closer look at our movie model. Inside this file, I've created four functions called getMovies, getMovie, addMovie, and deleteMovie. Each function is responsible for interfacing directly with our database object to complete one of its responsibilities. Even though each of these functions are one-liners right now, you can easily imagine them grow in complexity when they start to perform more data-related logic. So if we wanted to follow the MVC design pattern, these functions would be directly used by our movie controller. So here I have my movie controller function that imports our movie model. And then I create another four functions with the same names of getMovies, getMovie, addMovie, and deleteMovie. The interesting thing about our controller functions is that they have no clue of where this data is technically coming from. They don't know if it's coming from an API request, a local storage instance, or any other source. All our controllers know how to do is request data from our movie model and then pass that data over to our view components. So through this, you should start to see the separation between our models and our views by having the controller as a middleman. Now we can take a closer look at one of our view components. So here I have my home.js file, which is a very small scale React component. I'm importing movie controller, so I have access to those four controller functions. And you can see that I'm rendering out a header tag called movies database, an input for my search bar, and then I want to render all of my movies that are available in my database. So I'm calling render movies, which is calling my movie controllers get movies function. So now we can start to see the chain of actions where a user loads up the page and then they call the get movies function inside of our movie controller file, which will then call our movie models get movies function. That's going to request all the movies from our database, pass it back over to our controller, which is going to pass it back over to our view. Before you start using MVC in any of your future projects, I think it's worthwhile to walk through some of its benefits and drawbacks. So let's take a closer look at its benefits, where the first one is loose coupling. The great thing about the MVC design pattern is that it aims to draw very distinct lines between models, views, and components. This makes it a lot easier for developers to understand the responsibilities of each component that they come across in an application. Another benefit that comes from MVC is that you can generate multiple views for the same model. So let's say that you had some data that you wanted to render as a bar chart, but then you also have that same data, but you want to render it as a pie chart. MVC allows you to seamlessly move between these two different views with the same data. And the last benefit is testability. Again, MVC really encourages the separation between models, views, and controllers. So having that distinct separation and testing makes it very easy for you to pinpoint what you want to test for each component. And for a couple of its drawbacks, one of the biggest is that MVC oftentimes introduces a lot of layers of abstraction. So as an application grows in complexity, what happens a lot of the times is that there has to be more models and views and even controllers to support this next level of complexity. 
And oftentimes what you would see is that there's just a lot of intermediate states between models and controllers and views that can be kind of hard to navigate these growing code bases. And another drawback to MVC is that it has a pretty steep learning curve. It's not the most intuitive or naturally feeling design pattern just because when you start to build applications for the first time, it feels very natural to keep data very close to visual components. MVC is a design pattern that focuses on separating out your data from your logic, from your visual components. The separation makes it easier for developers to organize and navigate their growing code bases. It's by far one of the most popular design patterns out there for web development, and I've used it in the majority of my applications, so I hope you start using it in your apps. That's it for MVC. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more content. If there's any specific topic you want me to cover in a future video, please feel free to drop it down in the comment section below, or you can send me a DM on Twitter where I talk about JavaScript and a variety of different things. And with that, I'll see you on the next one.